Patanjali, Wikipedia article audio. Vedanta Name Life Grammar tradition Yoga tradition Tamil Saivite legend Works Yoga Sutra Mahaba, Ye Svoda Metaphysics as Grammatical Motivation Patanjalatantra Bibliography Patanjali is a proper Indian name. Several important ancient Sanskrit works are ascribed to one or more authors of this name, and a great deal of scholarship has been devoted over the last century or so to the issue of disambiguation. Amongst the more important authors called Patanjali are According to Munir Munir Williams, the word Patanjali is a compound name from Pata and Anj or Anjali. Louis Renu was among the many scholars who have suggested that the Patanjali who wrote on yoga was a different person than the Patanjali who wrote a commentary on Panini's grammar. In 1914, James Wood proposed that they were the same person. In 1922, Surendranath Dasgupta presented a series of arguments to tentatively propose that the famed grammar text and the yoga text author may be identical. The view that these were likely two different authors is generally accepted, but some Western scholars consider them as a single entity. Some in the Indian tradition have held that one Patanjali wrote treatises on grammar, medicine, and yoga. This has been memorialized in a verse by Bhoja at the start of his commentary on the Yoga Sutras called Rajamartanda, and the following verse found in Shivarama's 18th century text. English translation, I bow with my hands together to the eminent sage Patanjali, who removed the impurities of the mind through yoga, of speech through grammar, and of the body through medicine. This tradition is discussed by Mullen Belt who traces this relatively late idea back to Bhoja, who was perhaps influenced by a verse by Bart, Harry that speaks of an expert in yoga, medicine, and grammar who, however, is not named. No known Sanskrit text prior to the 10th century states that the one and the same Patanjali was behind all the three treatises. In the grammatical tradition, Patanjali is believed to have lived in the 2nd century BCE. He wrote a Mahabhasya on Panini's Sutras, in a form that quoted the commentary of Kadiyana S. Vartikas. This is a major influential work on Sanskrit grammar and linguistics. The dating of Patanjali and his Mahabhasya is established by a combination of evidence, those from the Maurya Empire period, the historical events mentioned in the examples he used to explain his ideas, the chronology of ancient classical Sanskrit texts that respect his teachings, and the mention of his text or his name in ancient Indian literature. Of the three ancient grammarians, the chronological dating of Patanjali to mid-2nd century BCE is considered as reasonably accurate by mainstream scholarship. The text influenced Buddhist grammatical literature, as well as memoirs of travelers to India. For example, the Chinese pilgrim I Tsing mentions that the Mahabhasya is studied in India and advanced scholars learn it in three years. Practice self-study, to commune with, your chosen divinity. In the yoga tradition, Patanjali is a revered name. This Patanjali's over comprises the sutras about yoga and the commentary integral to the sutras, called the BHA, Ye. Some consider the sutras and the BHA, Ye to have had different authors, the commentary being ascribed to an editor. According to Philip Moss, the same person named Patanjali composed the sutras and the BHA, Ye commentary. Radhakrishnan and more attribute the text to the grammarian Patanjali, 
dating it as 2nd century BCE, during the Maurya Empire. Moss estimates Patanjali's Yoga Sutras date to be about 400 CE, based on tracing the commentaries on it published in the first millennium CE. Edwin Bryant, on the other hand, surveys the major commentators in his translation of the Yoga Sutras. He states that most scholars date the text shortly after the turn of the Common Era, but that it has been placed as early as several centuries before that. Bryant concludes that a number of scholars have dated the Yoga Sutras as late as the 4th or 5th century CE, but these arguments have all been challenged, and late chronology for this Patanjali and his text are problematic. Regarding his early years, a Tamil Saiva Siddhanta tradition from around 10th century AD holds that Patanjali learned yoga along with seven other disciples from the great yogic guru Nandi Deva, as stated in Tirumular S. Tirumandiram. Nandi Aril Petra Nadh R. Nadanam, Nand Higal Nalvar Siva Yoga Mamuni, Mandru Thazuda Patanjali Vyakramar, and Drivar Inodu Inmaramam. Translation We sought the feet of the god who graced Nandikesvara, the four Nandis, Siva Yoga Muni, Patanjali, Vyakrapada, and I, we were these eight. Whether the two works, the Yoga Sutras and the Mahabha, yea, are by the same author has been the subject of considerable debate. The authorship of the two is first attributed to the same person in Bhojadava's Rajamartanda, a relatively late commentary on the Yoga Sutras, as well as several subsequent texts. As for the texts themselves, the Yoga Sutra 3.44 cites a sutra as that from Patanjali by name, but this line itself is not from the Mahabha, yea. This 10th century legend of single authorship is doubtful. The literary styles and contents of the Yoga Sutras and the Mahabha, ya are entirely different, and the only work on medicine attributed to Patanjali is lost. Sources of doubt include the lack of cross-references between the texts, and no mutual awareness of each other, unlike other cases of multiple works by Sanskrit authors. Also, some elements in the Yoga Sutras may date from as late as the 4th century AD, but such changes may be due to divergent authorship, or due to later editions which are not atypical in the oral tradition. Most scholars refer to both works as by Patanjali, without meaning that they are by the same author. In addition to the Mahabha, Ya and Yoga Sutras, the 11th century commentary on Sharika by the Bengali scholar Kakrapa, Idata, and the 16th century text Patanjala Karata ascribes to Patanjali a medical text called the Karakapradasa, S.K., Ta, which is apparently a revision of the medical treatise by Karika. While there is a short treatise on yoga in the medical work called the Karakasa, Hita, Towards the end of the chapter called Sararasthana, it is notable for not bearing much resemblance to the Yoga Sutras, and in fact presents a form of eightfold yoga that is completely different from that laid out by Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras and the commentary Yoga Sutrabha, yea. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali are 196 Indian Sutras on Yoga. It was the most translated ancient Indian text in the medieval era, having been translated into about 40 Indian languages and two non-Indian languages, Old Javanese and Arabic. The text fell into obscurity for nearly 700 years from the 12th to 19th century, and made a comeback in late 19th century due to the efforts of Swami Vivekananda and others. It gained prominence again as a comeback classic in the 20th century. Before the 20th century, history indicates the Indian yoga scene was dominated by other yoga texts such as the Bhagavad Gita, Yoga Vasistha, and Yoga Yajnavakaya. 
Scholars consider the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali formulations as one of the foundations of classical yoga philosophy of Hinduism. The Mahabha, Ya of Patanjali on the A. Adhyayi of Pa, Eni is a major early exposition on Pa, Eni, along with the somewhat earlier Vartika by Kadiyana. Patanjali relates to how words and meanings are associated Patanjali claims Shavda Pramana that the evidentiary value of words is inherent in them, and not derived externally the word meaning association is natural. These issues in the word meaning relation would be elaborated in the Sanskrit linguistic tradition, in debates between the Mimamsa, Naya and Buddhist schools over the next 15 centuries. Patanjali also defines an early notion of Svota, which would be elaborated considerably by later Sanskrit linguists like Bhartrihari. In Patanjali, a Svota is the invariant quality of speech. The noisy element can be long or short, but the Svota remains unaffected by individual speaker differences. Thus, a single letter or sound such as K, P, or A is an abstraction, distinct from variants produced in actual enunciation. This concept has been linked to the modern notion of phoneme, the minimum distinction that defines semantically distinct sounds. Thus a phoneme is an abstraction for a range of sounds. However, in later writings, especially in Bhartrihari, the notion of svota changes to become more of a mental state, preceding the actual utterance, akin to the lemma. Patanjali's writings also elaborate some principles of morphology. In the context of elaborating on pa, Eni's aphorisms, he also discusses Kadiyana's commentary, which are also aphoristic and sutra-like, in the later tradition, these were transmitted as embedded in Patanjali's discussion. In general, he defends many positions of Pa, Eni which were interpreted somewhat differently in Kadiyana. Unlike Pa, Eni's objectives in the Ashtayadhyayi, which is to distinguish correct forms and meanings from incorrect ones, Patanjali's objectives are more metaphysical. These include the correct recitations of the scriptures, maintaining the purity of texts, clarifying ambiguity and also the pedagogic goal of providing an easier learning mechanism. This stronger metaphysical bent has also been indicated by some as one of the unifying themes between the Yoga Sutras and the Mahabha, yea, although a close examination of actual Sanskrit usage by Woods showed no similarities in language or terminology. The text of the Mahabha, Ya was first critically edited by the 19th century Orientalist Franz Kielhorn, who also developed philological criteria for distinguishing Katyayana's voice from Patanjali's. Subsequently, a number of other editions have come out, the 1968 text and translation by S.D. Joshi and J.H.F. Rude Bergen often being considered definitive. Regrettably, the latter work is incomplete. Patanjali also writes with a light touch. For example, his comment on the conflicts between the orthodox Brahminic groups, versus the heterodox, Anastika groups seems relevant for religious conflict even today, the hostility between these groups was like that between a mongoose and a snake. He also sheds light on contemporary events, commenting on the recent Greek incursion, and also on several tribes that lived in the northwest regions of the subcontinent. Patanjali is also the reputed author of a medical text called Patanjala also called Patanjala or Patanjalatantra. This text is quoted in many yoga and health-related Indian texts. Patanjali is called a medical authority in a number of Sanskrit texts such as Yogaratnakara, Yogaratnasamukhya, Padarthavahnana, Kakratata Basya.
Some of these quotes are unique to Patanjala, but others are also found in major Hindu medical treatises such as Sharika Samhita and Sushruta Samhita. Advaita, Vishishtadvaita, Dvaita Vedanta, Badabheta, Dvaitadvaita, Akintyabheta Abhita, Shadadvaita. The author of the Mahabha, Ye, an ancient treatise on Sanskrit grammar and linguistics, based on the A. Adhyayi of Pa, Eni. This Patanjali's life is dated to mid 2nd century BCE by both Western and Indian scholars. This text was titled as a Bhasya or commentary on Katyayanapanini's work by Patanjali but is so revered in the Hindu traditions that it is widely known simply as Mahabhasya or a great commentary. So vigorous, well-reasoned and vast is his text, that this Patanjali has been the authority as the last grammarian of classical Sanskrit for 2000 years, with Panini and Kadiyana preceding him. Their ideas on structure, grammar, and philosophy of language have also influenced scholars of other Indian religions such as Buddhism and Jainism, the compiler of the Yoga Sutras, a text on yoga theory and practice, and a notable scholar of Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy. He is variously estimated to have lived between 2nd century BCE to 4th century CE, with more scholars accepting dates between 2nd and 4th century CE. The Yoga Sutras is one of the most important texts in the Hindu tradition and the foundation of classical yoga. It is the Indian yoga text that was most translated in its medieval era into 40 Indian languages. Also, the third chapter is the basis for the TM Cities, the author of a medical text called Patanjalatantra. He is cited and this text is quoted in many medieval health sciences related texts, and Patanjali is called a medical authority in a number of Sanskrit texts such as Yogaratnakara, Yogaratnasamukhya, and Padarthavihnana. There is a fourth Hindu scholar also named Patanjali, who likely lived in 8th century CE and wrote a commentary on Sharika Samhita and this text is called Karakavartika. According to some modern-era Indian scholars such as P.V. Sharma, the two medical scholars named Patanjali may be the same person, but completely different person than the Patanjali who wrote the Sanskrit grammar classic Mahabhasya. Patanjali is one of the 18 siddhars in the Tamil Siddha tradition. There is a fourth scholar also named Patanjali, who likely lived in 8th century CE and wrote a commentary on Sharika Samhita and this text is called Karakavartika. The two medical scholars named Patanjali may be the same person, but generally accepted to be completely different person than the Patanjali who wrote the Sanskrit grammar classic Mahabhasya.